What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Uh, today I have a bit of a continuation. Um, the last Tier Zoo video that I did was called Are Hippos OP? And in that video, he put hippos at S tier. And I noticed on the chart of all other animals, he had elephants listed at B tier. And I was wondering what exactly would make an elephant be a B tier animal? Like what are the negatives that would push an elephant all the way down to B tier? Because usually when an animal has a lot of size or a lot of intelligence, it gets them into the top spot of the, um, the tier list. Now, in order to be the size thing, you have to, or in order to qualify for an S tier based on size, you have to be at the top of the food chain or just barely smart enough so that you can know how to use your size properly. Like that's the reason why white rhinos are so low because of their bad eyesight and their bad intelligence. It is pretty easy to um, take advantage of them, trap them, things like that. Usually like predators in Africa, they tend to stay away from rhinos simply because of how thick their hide is. But if a pack of uh, lions that are very hungry want to go after a rhino, it's not too hard to outsmart them. As long as if the lions are competent, they can get it done. But elephants, like a grown elephant, they can destroy a pack of lions, destroy just about anything in the uh, the meta, <laughs> if you will. So I'm going uh, to go ahead and watch this and see what he has to say about it. Maybe it's not on uh, B list. Maybe that was just a, a graphic he put together for that last video. But let's check this out and see what it has to offer. Oh, by the way, this video was made by Tierzu, obviously. If you don't know about them, there will be a link for their channel at the end of this video that'll pop up right around here. Click on it, watch their videos, subscribe to them, like their videos, all the other good stuff. If you uh, want to show them support, best way you can do it is to watch the original video first. Um, if you, Now's the chance to do it if you haven't done it already. If you don't feel like watching the video twice, what I recommend is right-clicking the original link in the description box that takes you to the video open it in a new window, put the video on mute, and have it play in the background while you're watching my reaction. By the time my video is done, their video will be done as well, and you'll give both of us a view. Now, with that being said, let's jump into this. This video was made in partnership with CuriosityStream. When an elephant wants your territory, you get the hell out of there. Being the largest land building in the current meta has its advantages. Size makes you much harder to defeat, simply by nature of having a higher HP stat, and also possibly having your weak points out of reach. However, size alone typically isn't enough to let any particular build reach a high tier spot in the meta, because large size comes with a lot of disadvantages too. The two most important ones are that being a giant makes defeating you worth a lot more experience and that sustaining giant size requires significantly more food and water. Despite these challenges, there's no question that elephants have carved out a dominant niche in the African meta, which is saying a lot given that Africa is basically the Grandmaster League server of outside. Elephants also boast a sizable player base in the Asia server, so how is it that they're so successful? For that, we'll need to look at the elephant build's stats and abilities. First, their stats. So it's probably no surprise that the elephant's HP and defense stats both are quite high. The massive size of the elephant means it can take hits that would cripple or kill other players, such as the head bash of a fellow elephant. But the elephant also boasts a thick hide that allows it to negate damage of low power attacks, and more importantly, mitigate one of the main downsides of being massive, becoming riddled with parasites. Mm. On the offensive side of things, it's probably also no surprise that the elephant boasts a multitude of ways to deal serious damage. Oh damn, it just ran over the baby Rhino act as a powerful disjointed hitbox that can both parry incoming attacks and impale any player too slow to get out of the way. The elephant build is also one of the only builds in the game capable of knocking down trees. This means that despite them not having the height advantage that giraffes do, they can still access the same treetop loot if they need to. It also means players cannot escape an elephant's attack by climbing up a tree. The elephant's trunk can also be used as a blunt force weapon or a grapple. Damn! <laughs> but honestly, that only scratches the surface of what a trunk is useful for. We'll come back to that. In the mobility department, we find one of the elephant's only weaknesses. Their top speed is nowhere near sufficient to let them outrun an attacking player or chase down a target. Yeah, I Luckily, can see that. Luckily, their other stats generally mean that they don't have to worry about this. But they, yeah, but However, size shouldn't have to worry about that too much. The mobility has other implications too. Elephants are easily blocked by environmental barriers because they lack the ability to jump. 
They aren't particularly fast swimmers either, although they have ways of managing this weakness too. Their last notable stat is their incredible intelligence level. It is among the highest in the game, tied for second place with the cetaceans like dolphins and whales. This gives them access to the tool use ability, problem solving capabilities, cross species cooperation based strategies, and the ability to remember <coughs> places on the minimap useful for survival, such as watering holes in times of drought. <laughs> Due to the elephant's long lifespan, their intellect can cause them to gain incredible amounts of wisdom over the course of their playthrough, to the point where an experienced elephant may have better knowledge of its territory than even a human. So in terms of stats, elephants obviously have one of the highest base stat totals in the game, lacking only in mobility and stealth. But this alone would not be enough for me to give them a top tier rating. So what abilities do they employ to make use of their stats and dominate such a competitive meta? There are two that I want to discuss. First, their ears. The elephant's ears serve multiple purposes. They're more sensitive than human ears to sound, particularly low frequency sounds, aka the kinds of sounds elephants can make. Because of that, elephants can communicate over great distances via infrasound. This can be critical for coordinating team strategies and warning your teammates when danger approaches or if another herd is encroaching on your territory. In addition to their auditory uses, the elephant's ears also grant the elephant a heat resistance buff. Their ears can be flushed with blood and flapped around to lower their body temperature, ensuring that they never take damage from overheating. This buff is much more really? integral to gameplay in the African server, and so players tend to spec into <coughs> larger ears when trying to compete there. That's a good ability, but I'm gonna cut to the chase. Basically everything OP about the elephant can be traced back to their signature ability, their trunk. Because this ability does everything. Because it's a modified nose, the trunk grants a bonus to all detection and search rolls based on smell. This lets elephant players pinpoint which direction they need to head in order to find more food or water, and lets them know if an enemy player is nearby. But smell barely scratches the surface of what a trunk can do. <laughs> the trunk's core use is as a fifth appendage. The elephant's actual limbs Your aren't very versatile. Now. Outside of standing and walking, the most advanced move they can do is a pretty simple kick. Oof. The trunk, however, has multiple combat moves, including a simple bash attack, and more importantly, a highly effective grab attack. The bash attack is honestly worse than a kick in terms of damage, although it does have better range. But the grab attack can make certain matchups downright unwinnable for the other player. Wow, he just launched that. Grabs aren't moped, just useful for attacks. Then like a motorcycle. Being able to pick up and carry items is the hallmark of a high tier character that can make use of tools. Elephants are known to use sticks as weapons, massively extending the hitbox of their trunk swipe attack. They can also throw items, which theoretically could give them an absolutely massive attack range. They aren't very accurate with their throws yet, but once the elephant player base masters this tech, I wouldn't be surprised Woo! if the community starts calling for bans. But again, there's still more that the trunk can do. The next use it can have is for intimidation. Elephants can use their trunk to execute the move Trumpet Blast. This AoE attack casts an intimidation debuff on all surrounding players, and is extremely effective for clearing an area. Control over a watering hole can mean the difference between leveling up or getting a game over, and the Trumpet Blast attack is integral to the elephant's success in driving away other players from these control points without actually needing to risk a physical battle. <laughs> Lastly, I mentioned before that elephants He's are slow swimmers. Normally this would be a problem because it means elephants would have trouble crossing large bodies of water. They aren't dense enough to sink to the bottom and gallop across like hippos do. However, even though it might take them a while to cross, elephants have no reason to fear drowning because they can use their trunk like a snorkel, completely negating the need to worry about their O2 meter draining. Aside from humans, elephants have no losing matchups. While they are vulnerable during the first few levels of their playthrough, before they are bulky enough to shrug off most attacks, the elephant's team strategies are usually enough to protect the noobs. Hopefully this video convinced you how overpowered elephants and okay. particularly so what is their trunk ability are. By the way, you may have noticed that my last video actually got blocked. While I hope to have the video restored soon, you should know that the blocked video as well as another completely original- Let me see something, what, what did it say? It's not H, uh, NHK's fault, they animated the footage for Curiosity Streams documentary and likely don't realize I have permission from them to use the animators animations. It should be fixed soon once the miscommunication is rectified. Um, yeah, the same thing happened to one of my uh, tier two videos where it got blocked because of uh, footage that was from a documentary. Um, normally you just cut it out, but given that most of his footage is from Curiosity Stream because of the partnership that they have, I can see how this can be an issue. It shouldn't get, it shouldn't even get to this point, but I mean, 
Whatever. Well, I hope to have the video restored soon. You should know that the blocked video, as well as another completely original video, are both available on Nebula, the video streaming service created and owned by several independent creators, including myself. It's a platform where creators can post whatever content they like without having to worry about rogue algorithms issuing copyright claims or YouTube's demonetization policies. And because of our business partner, CuriosityStream, us creators are given opportunities to pursue much grander projects with a higher production value. Both of the videos I've currently got only on Nebula are exactly that. Both of those videos feature footage from CuriosityStream's documentary Amazing Dino World, a brand new CuriosityStream original that's easily on par with Walking with Dinosaurs in production quality. And you can get access to their documentary and my Nebula originals. I think at I'm the actually same still time, subscribed because to Because the best Curiosity way to get access Stream. to Nebula is through our bundle with CuriosityStream, which gives you access to both amazing streaming sites. And hey, if you just want to learn more about Pachyderm builds, there are plenty of other documentaries on CuriosityStream you can watch too, such as Ice Age Giants and Walking with Beasts both of which have entire episodes centered around mammoths and mastodons, the pioneers of the pachyderm build. So head on over to curiositystream.com slash tearsu and start your free trial of both services. Last but not least, special thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and thank you for watching. Okay, so elephants were in fact on S tier. I was wondering, like, there's no way hippos are S tier, but elephants are B tier. Like, what, what the hell's up with that? But, um... Yeah, I'm guessing that was just a, a swerve to get you to watch the other video, in which case it worked. Good job, good sir. I, I, I appreciate your efforts. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you, like I said, normally when animals have a significant amount of size, they they make it to the top of the meta just, just for the fact that they have size. Like, elephants are also extremely intelligent, so it was obvious for me that they should be an S tier animal. Then you have things like blue whales, which I'm not sure exactly how their intelligence are. They're pretty smart though. I wouldn't say on the same level as elephants or anything, but they're definitely smart. But because of their size, again, they pretty much become immune to, um, any type of predators. Like they're just, you just don't mess with them. The same could be said for, uh, Dinosaurs. There was a video that he did on the dinosaur tier list that I did a reaction to, and the S tier animal was spoilers if you don't want to know. <laughs> there was only one S tier animal on all, or one S tier dinosaur on that entire list, and that was the sauropods, the long neck, gigantic uh, herbivores that pretty much were immune to other animals because they were so big. No animal was messing with them even t-rexes don't mess with certain sauropods it's like you get them while they're young once they get to a certain age they're untouchable um yeah it is interesting i did watch a video from um i think it was from the channel today i learned and they talked about like how big could humans possibly get and they talked about the limits of uh genetics like your your DNA has coded how a person, if they even given like their max potential, like what's their max potential? Like what's the biggest you're capable of getting? And that's with all the proper, um, that's with all the proper uh, requirements met. So like with proper nutrition, uh, with exceptional, uh, healthcare and things like that like how big could a person get and i believe they said maybe on average humans could probably get maybe like three to six inches bigger on average if you if we get our nutrition to like the absolute peak it can possibly get but once you get to that point it's like you you can't get any bigger like that that's the most a human could possibly get without having to actually evolve so that our bone structure is stronger or our, our, the proportions of our body are different. Because I believe in the video they were talking about like each time you add a, like a certain size to like your bones, you have to times it by 10 for, um, what was it? You have to times it by 10 for like the size and then times that number by 10 for volume or something like that. So it was like it, it made it a lot more, 
Uh, in order to get to that size, because of how much bigger your bones would have to be in order to support it, you would, um, we would have to change the way our bone structure works. They did say if we were like on another planet that had less gravity, humans could get even more taller, like just a little bit more taller if you're on some place without gravity. But because of gravity, it keeps us limited to a certain size. Um, blue whales, fish in general, they're able to get so big because they're in water. Water, the buoyancy of water and stuff, it takes away some of the burden that your body has when it comes to um, your size and it weighing onto, uh, well, weighing onto your body, I guess. Because if a, if a whale gets beached, it's pretty much a death sentence. Like, they're going to get crushed by their own weight. <laughs> like, that's that's the limits that we have living on water or living on land. Um, so if we were able to change our bone structure or change the way our bodies are proportioned and we were living in an area that had less gravity and we had all the proper nutrition and uh, health care and things like that we would probably be able to get to the point where the average human is like six, eight, six, nine. <laughs> uh, if we change our bone structures around, maybe even bigger than that. But at that point, would we even be humans anymore? Like, what would we have to look like if we want to get to like giant sizes? But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I certainly did. Uh, Shout out to Curiosity Streams. I know it's a free plug. That this kind of messed up. I, I should be charging them, but I mean, they're sponsors of the people I'm doing a reaction to, so they get a free plug based on this video. Um, it's a one-time thing. After this, you might have to throw your brother, uh, throw your boy a check. But um, yeah, with with everything said, Curiosity Stream. I'm subscribed to him. He has a deal partnership with him. If you want to check it out, go to his video in the description box. It should have a link for uh, his promo code and things like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully you've been a little bit more enlightened. Um, I certainly have. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. So I'm going to give you the deuces and I'm signing out. Deuces.